Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. We got a ton of new MLB The Show 21 content. We're gonna break all that down as per usual. Guys, before we do though, make sure you check out my Twitch channel. I go live at 10 a.m. Eastern time every single day, playing the show all the way through, grinding it out. Today though, we're gonna talk about, you know, a really nice card added in, in one of the best prospects in baseball, as well as a new headliner and some updated stuff for the second inning program. Let's get into the video. So first things first, let's take a look at the latest prospect card, the 90 overall, Jared Kelnick, who is now added in. He is a prospect reward set. So if you collect 10 of these prospect cards, you will get the 90 overall, Jared Kelnick. So we'll take a look at him. Obviously, one of the best prospects in baseball. And that contact, really nice, especially against righties at 96. Lefties, he's got 80. And the power at 80 and 70, so not huge there. Can play all three outfielder positions. His fielding is phenomenal, 80. Five arm at 84 and accuracy at 76 and he's got some speed as well at 80 speed 75 on the stolen bases a really nice well-rounded card um i think that it's going to depend on his swing because obviously there's so many great options in the outfield for you i would say this if you're free to play probably not a card you want to go after unless you've been grinding conquest and haven't really sold the other prospect cards in my opinion again i've said this from the start my content is for the beginner players and again, if you're one of the beginner players, I would always recommend grinding out the live series collection first by selling anything that isn't a live series card. And obviously that's going to mean you're going to either have to buy your prospects or grind out some more conquest. So how do you get these cards? I'll show you in just a second. First is, well, I mean, you can just buy them on the auction or on the marketplace, but they are expensive. Basically, every single one, uh, even at the very bottom, we've got, you know, basically nine, eight to 10,000 stubs just for the lower overall ones. Obviously, the, um, the, the trade in 10 is driving that market. So I really would not recommend spending about 100,000 stubs on this Jared Kelnick card. However, there is a way to get him for free, and I'll show you guys how to do that right now. If you go all the way back into the uh, big conquest map that would be you know the one that for for albert pools and if you haven't gotten albert pools this might be a great time as well if you collect all of the divisions you will get a reward uh, by capturing all the ale strongholds for example central all the way through every single division you will get a prospect pack from that division so if you do everything right you're gonna end up with a bunch there uh, you'll get six in total so if you do this map once again it is repeatable you can basically get almost all of the ones that you're half of them that you need to get this Jared Kelnick card. And again, for free-to-play players, this might be something that you want to take advantage of. So again, you just grind these out. Also, a nice way to make stubs if you're someone who can't play online or doesn't really excel online. You could collect these and just sell them immediately as they are going for quite a bit in the marketplace. And we've also got the latest headliner, set number seven. That comes with a 93 Craig Biggio with second base, left field, and center field eligibility. A great contact swinger, very little power at 62 and 72, respectively. Um, you know, uh, not a bad, uh, again, not a bad contact card, and his fielding is phenomenal as well as is his speed. Nice there. It's just, the issue is, guys, again, for beginner players, I really wouldn't recommend a lot of contact players um, in your lineup just because if you struggle getting hits consistently in this game, especially online, you don't want to have a player in your lineup that basically can't really hit home runs consistently because you want to make sure that if you are going to only get a few hits in a game, that those hits can be impactful ones. So um, that's just what I mean by that and why I wouldn't go after it for a lot of reasons. In the marketplace, he is going for quite a bit, but in all honesty, this is one that I would probably sell. We got you know other eligibilities maybe, but not really a strong option in my opinion for the beginner players. Also, guys, we got more options for the XP uh, in the second inning. So now when it came out, there wasn't really many options other than just doing the daily missions and the missions by, and that was all done online. We did get a second inning showdown um, that is added. So again, you just go to showdown and you can run through that. It doesn't take very long at all. And uh, that'll get you a solid XP bump as that'll get you 35,000 XP um, to really get towards it. And again, um, I'm going to mention this once again. Any of these cards that you get here, so, I mean, the Michael Kopech is, in my opinion, the best one out of those ones. I mentioned this in my prior videos. Any of these cards, including the second inning boss, they can significantly help your lineup, but if, if you're going to play this game consistently, just try and get the live series done 
And by selling these guys uh, as soon as you possibly can, you can really make a lot of stubs and then buy them back as the uh, as the second inning or whatever inning you're on program goes along. Because obviously these cards aren't going to be in your lineup. Maybe the Lee Smith because he's a really, really good reliever card. The Jason Bay is an awesome hitter, but there's going to be a ton of outfielders that have, you know, you know that are, that are same elites uh, or better later on in the year. And if you can get the live series done, you can spend your stubs later on on these cards. So I would just sell when I would get them and then buy them back if you want at a cheaper price as the inning goes along. But just uh, wanted to give you guys another update on that as there are now more ways to get your XP for your innings. And then lastly, I wanted to give an update on my team as uh, I've pretty much rounded it out. There's a few more cards, obviously, Alfonso Soriano, who I'm very, very close to, and Chipper Jones are going to go in the lineup. But here are the mainstays so far. This Freddie Freeman, the Diamond Freddie Freeman, has been absolutely nuts for me. Again, I'm not an elite player. Anyone that bats over 300 for me... Uh, uh, is, you know, in my opinion, uh, just a card that I've had a lot of success with. 29 home runs in uh, in 100 games there for him, batting over, three, batting over 300. He's got a really, really nice swing. Got the 94 Ernie Banks and the 99 Jackie Robinson. I'm not going to lie, the Jackie Robinson card is a really noodle bat. You have to really tee things up, but now I'm starting to get his swing down a little bit, and obviously that speed uh, has been really effective, not to mention not a ton of great second baseman out there. So now I'm starting to get used to him, but... Early on, it just I could not make power or contact with him at all. The 99 David Ortiz has been phenomenal, as has Larry Doby, and then Mike Trout. In still the best card in this game, in my opinion. Like I, he is, it is so nice to have uh, you know the best player in baseball have the best card in an ultimate team mode. You know nothing you know sad to say about NHL, but regardless, um, this has been a really fun card. I've been tearing it up with him, and then the uh, pro or the um, conquest Albert Pools again, same situation. I've loved this card and uh, just a really really good feel all the way around. And then Jorge Posada. I do like Salvador Perez as well, but he kind of cooled off for me and went with Posada, and now he, since he's a switch hitter, has been killing it for me, so um, just an option there. And off the bench, Kyle Lewis. I wish I could fit him in um, in my outfield, but my outfielders have been so good for me. He has been my favorite bench bat because he uh, absolutely smashes. Love his swing. In terms of pitching, Frank Tanana has been my go-to guy with the f level 5 parallel um, Felix Hernandez, Bob Feller, 6 to. I, I not a huge fan online of him. I haven't been able to use him successfully. Garrett Cole, however, has been really good in my bullpen. This Rob Dibble card has been electric for me. Uh, anyone that gets him for free, hundred percent throw him in because his splits are gross. Devin Williams, as well as Eckersley, Hoffman, Hader, Chapman, Mariano Rivera, and then Rich Gossage. There is the team. All right, guys. So that is going to do it for today's content. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. And don't forget to subscribe for daily MLB content. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.